Preston had lost his mind. Zach ain't never going to be able to stop Fatima from wilding out. And it's Karen finally really done done with Zachary. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister, Erica Vane. Coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another sister's video. And in this video, I'm giving you the breakdown for the mid-season finale for season six. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your button notification so you don't miss out on any of my sister's content and conversation. Because even though we are currently on hiatus until October, when the rest of season six will begin and play out, you will still get daily sister's videos talking about characters, storylines, specific plot points, and your theories. And the only way that you catch it and you get in on the conversation is to be a subscribe and to have your bell notifications turned on. Now, this video, I'm gonna to try to be as thorough as possible. I also will be coming with a ranking for this season so far, so be on the lookout for that video, as well as my episode 12 preview and 6B teaser breakdown, because we do have a couple of little visual glimpses into the future of what we can expect. And as you'll consist, you let us talk TV with, of course, I'm gonna break it down for you. In this breakdown though, I'm gonna structure it basically by character. So first up, we are gonna go into Daniela King and Preston's high ass. Before we jump into this video, I have to let you know that this video was created during the 2023 WGA and SAG after strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, the series being covered here wouldn't exist. Through the duration of these strikes, my company and I stand in solidarity with both unions and are refusing paid opportunities presented by struck companies such as the eight major Hollywood studios. Content created on Erica Vane platforms are independent of any struck company and not created in promotion of said company. Articles, videos, and audio posts are created in critique of the media in support of the artists who created it. It is important that you, the audience, know that these strikes are a result of corporate greed. The writers and actors have been victimized by major studios for quite some time and the time is now to demand fair pay and working conditions, standardized practices across streaming business models, and other terms that will ensure the pipeline for new aspiring creatives remains open and viable for years to come. At this time, neither union is calling for a boycott of any television or film content. If you would like to support either or both unions, consider donating to strike funds, walking local picket lines, and using your social media platform to amplify messages delivered daily by union members and leaders. Links to official websites and more information can be found in the description box down below. Videos explaining both strikes and continual strike news can be found on Erica Vane TV. Now let's get into it. I get that Danny and Preston's relationship, current state of affairs, is supposed to be comedic relief as we, you know, catch up with Preston still reeling from the weed that he smoked the night before. Daniela, I don't know what kind of weed that you're smoking, but girl, just because you can handle it don't mean that it's okay. If it still has this man this high that he is damn near delirious, telling the stove to lock, calling Zach an N-word, and calling you the B-word, you need to go ahead and leave it alone and don't offer it to nobody else, okay? This... There are little beats of it where it could be funny, but the scene itself goes on for far too long, um, as it typically does when Tala is not necessarily doing a great job with pacing. Nothing is really being offered up by way of like new information or moving these stories forward. And I'm having a hard time really buying into laughing, ha ha, and kiki and with Danny and Preston until they actually really have some real conversations. Like they just jumped into this relationship because Danny decided that she's ready to be all in, not having a conversation about Mindy and where the hell this damn ring is, how Preston is going to let Mindy down or if he already let Mindy down because he couldn't have he's been with Danielle ever since he pulled Jonas ass up off of her and again I'm just really struggling with buying in to being able to laugh ha ha and kiki when there's still so many pressing issues on the table like Daniela has spent the last three seasons basically running from this man confronting this man basically saying that he is not what she wants and he can never be what she wants and she don't want to do the work to help him learn specific things to help best love her the way that she wants and needs to be loved and then all of a sudden in a matter of like a few episodes now after she you know kind of cuts a fool at steam plant drunk as hell meets the the fiance mindy who is basically his second choice behind Danny and he's flaunting that in his in her face now all of a sudden it's okay they could be together they can go ahead and give it a shot 
all with no real conversation, all with no real understanding or grounds. I'm just like, what kind of relationship are y'all building? You didn't peer pressured him into smoking weed, but you and now look at what we got. More shenanigans and foolishness. When the conversation needs to be, maybe Daniela needs to pursue sobriety for 30 days, 60 days. Maybe the conversation needs to be pressing where you keep going back to. You went and pulled this girl out of your hometown and you fly back there every so often. But if we're going to be together, we're going to build a life here. We're going to build a life there. Like there's so many things that need to be talked about. But meanwhile, we're sitting here listening to him call Zach because he called Zach over. Or basically he called Zach and then Daniela said, oh, I need you. I need you to come and help me with him. What the hell was Zach supposed to do with him, Danny? He's high. He can't unhigh him. He ain't the Wizard of Oz. Like, what are we talking about? The entire, like, four or five minutes that we spent with Danny and Preston felt so much like a waste. And then to add Zach to the equation and not actually have a moment where we get a full, like, vindication for their reconciliation as friends or support. And it, and it kind of feels like, you know, Zach is cool with her, which I don't think he has a problem with her, but... There's something to be said about how standoffish she is, man. It was something to be said about the last time that they actually really interacted on a one-on-one -on -one level. He was acting stank in his own duplex, acting like he was too good for Danny. Meanwhile, he was sleeping on her floor and her couch. And I don't like that. So, like, there's so much that Tyler Perry could have done when it comes to this scene and these three characters in particular and all of it. He was just like, yeah, nah, I ain't gonna do that. What we're gonna do is have Preston tell the stove to lock, put on Daniela's clothes, and cut a fool. And it's a no for me. It's just a major no. I'm not necessarily looking forward to the rest of their relationship throughout the rest of season six, but we'll see how it plays out. I am craving more meat and potatoes for all of the characters involved. Like if Danny and Preston are actually going to have a solid shot, they need to pull back the layers and set a better foundation. They need to get to a better understanding. They need to set expectations for one another as well as their relationship. And they need to accurately communicate what they want and need in this relationship. Because if they continue how they are with not having tough conversations, not actually being honest and open about who they are and what they need, they're literally still doomed to fail. And I'm tired of watching it. Moving on. Sabrina, Calvin, and Maurice. More of the same bull crap. The only thing I will say, no V, baby, you can hang a blazer, you can hang a dress. That hair is always gonna be giving. Face card never declines. Did y'all see Miss Mamas in this orange? With this natural beat down, but still glam. Like, at this point, Sabrina don't even need to have no damn lines. All she need to do is just show up and look cute. Because the outfit is giving way more than the storyline is. Maurice went down to the, the jail, confessed to Logan in the hopes to sacrifice himself to save Sabrina. Calvin finds out because Maurice reveals it once he gives back home because, you know, he's on cloud nine after spending the night with Sabrina on the couch, right? Calvin clears his day so that they can stay there with, with Maurice and then ultimately go down to the police station for Maurice to turn himself in. And Maurice does turn himself in. Nothing about the storyline makes sense and it just gets worse and worse and worse because in addition to it not making sense of like how they're actually pursuing trying to make this um, this case against Maurice in, in Sabrina Stick, how they're allowing Maurice to say that he did it and he didn't do it, but also like we have no inkling, no clue as to what is Logan's personal vendetta against Sabrina? Why is he so certain that Sabrina is the mastermind behind it? Why does he want to pin this on Sabrina when she literally had nothing to do with the bank robbery and had nothing to do with Q? Tyler is taking his good time, sweet time, actually tying anything together to make it make sense. And the, the storyline, while it is trite and very shallow, it, 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 it's very hard to even try to understand because he's not connecting any dots. Logan is probably one of the most disappointing characters that I have experienced in the Sisters universe because when he was presented, he was potential love interest for Danny and he was saving women from sex trafficking. How do we go from saving women from tra sex trafficking and being an undercover cop and being the overall good guy to now pursuing false accusations and putting someone away for a crime that they actually did not commit all in the name of getting a promotion and ultimately becoming chief of police behind lies where they do that at y'all the whole thing raggedy maurice had a couple of moments of comedic relief but even that it's all getting tired um 
Calvin, I want more for him. He's trying to be the best friend that he possibly can be and showing up but there's still so much meat and potatoes to his story that we have yet to get into so watching him basically run behind sabrina and maurice to try to clean up this mess and support them through this whole thing it just becomes draining because none of it is interesting not one bit of it sabrina don't need to go to jail for it sabrina needs to stop worrying about it if anything i would much rather us go back to the ty storyline that was calvin and um sabrina actually pursuing one another and trying to figure out how they could actually make it in a relationship while she's struggling to stop validating other people's opinions and feelings over her own go back to that because where we're at now i just actually hate it for us if you missed it we did go live after the episode on um my podcast our sister's keeper co-hosted by the amazing ally nick official and we dive into the specifics around maurice calvin and sabrina and their storyline so if you want more on that go ahead and watch that replay because that's all i got for them and then we come to the coup de gras of the episode. Zach, Karen, Aaron, Fatima, and honorable mentions of Andy, Gary, Hayden, and Pam. <laughs> first things first, Karen did not shoot Fatima. I know we visually saw her shoot Fatima in my air quotes, but we also visually saw Andy see Gary in the hotel room when she was having sex with Robin. But it didn't actually happen. It was a given daydream. It was a given vision. And I would bet any amount of money that Karen might be at the law firm in the parking garage. Maybe with her car parked right next to Andy's car, wherever Andy car Andy parks her car. And she's visualizing what she wants to do because she's so angry and she's so emotional and she wants to prove that she that girl and that she's not to be played with because whether y'all want to believe it or not, she's actually with the shits. She actually wants to smoke. Like y'all want Karen to be so meek and petite and feeble so bad. And she's only one of those things, petite. She's given strong, she's given bold, she's given about that life. And I think Fatima has met her match in going up against Karen. So I'm gonna just, Set that context up so that y'all know that I am now commenting from the space of I don't believe that she actually shot Fatima in broad daylight at the law firm in front of everybody, especially Andy's weekends. It just didn't happen. But what did happen is Karen arrives at her salon because, of course, Pam told her how, you know, they're down there cleaning up. Erin was so excited to see her. And y'all, this is the only thing that I have smoked for Karen about. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Slide down the wall, punch the air, do whatever you got to do because I really don't give a damn how you feel about how I feel. <laughs> I just don't, especially not right now. The only thing I have smoke with her about is how she is ignoring the amazing efforts and um, beautiful love that Aaron consistently displays and pushes her way. The way that she is shucking and jiving and backpedaling to return to a love that was toxic, but she might have felt was deep or she might, or she knows best, um, completely removing herself from the possibility of walking into something that's new and fresh because it scares her, because she's nervous, because of a recent trigger by way of Jennifer, whatever the thing is. And Tyler, second half of season six, we're going to need to understand what the hell is the reason why she's backing away from Aaron so hard and becoming so cold. Because we were actually onto something and now we're not and, and I need a reason for it. There has to be a reason for it. But that is the only thing that I really have issue with Karen about as like, Thinking about being befriending a Karen, this is what I would, as her friend, be most focused on. Her health and the baby, and then what the hell are you doing over here with Aaron? You can go through the motions, you can still love Zach, you can think that Zach won't want you back because he cares so deeply and he dropped everything and he did this and he did that and it just reminded you of this and it made you feel so good and it was all what you always wanted, bop, 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 yeah, cool, 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 cool. All that could be happening, process how you process, girl, cool. But like, do not set this asunder. This is some like once in a lifetime stuff. This is a real, real, real man. And that's no shade to Zach, but like a brother that you pray for, a brother that you hope for, a brother that you wish for. That is what Aaron is giving. And the way that you're able to just throw him away like this is beyond me. So as your friend Kern, I'm gonna have to go ahead and call Bush on this stuff that you're doing and tell you that you need to sit down and have a conversation with this man. As I have said on, on Our Sisters Keepers week after week after week, you owe this man a conversation at least. If you are triggered by Jennifer, 
fine, cool, understandable. Speak it. Y'all two are too close. We're really falling in love and too honest with each other for you to be running around the way that you're doing and not actually communicating. Because the wildest part about this is Aaron sees everything that you're doing and still loves you anyway, which is the wildest and most beautiful thing of this whole thing. So it's not even like if you're honest about how you feel, what might have triggered you on his end, and then what you're hoping for on ex end, that he's actually going to run or he's actually going to do something untoward to you. He's probably still going to support you because he's been that way. So for me, the same way that I want Fatima to grow up and start responding the way that she's responding because she's supposed to be better than this. She's supposed to be mature than this. I want Karen to grow up and have a conversation with Aaron because he deserves it, because he's earned it. And because at the end of the day, Karen, you deserve that type of man. The same way that Fatima deserves to be a mature woman that's not doing all of this goofy stuff, jumping through hoops, putting bitches' heads through mirrors, pulling holes out the hot tub and beating their ass. Like, Fatima deserves so much more peace than she's allowing herself by way of playing bully and clean up woman for Zach. And the moment that some of y'all that are diehard Fatima fans slash Fatima fans realize that, the better off this character will be. But that brings me to, you know, the confrontation that goes down, right? <laughs> Karen calls Zach because Pam delivers the letter. I mean, not the letter, the check. And Karen don't want it. She don't want no help from Zach. She thought that she was he was really in and he was feeling her, but he not. But you know what? So if you're not trying to go down this road with me, cool. I don't want your money. I will do this myself. Cool. First of all, Zach is at the law firm kicking and yucking it up after his meeting about wanting to get full custody of Michael because he ain't even had the boy for 20 minutes yet and he thinks that he can go ahead and take custody from the mother who's had the boy for three years and he's a better parent and he ain't never parent a day. It's the way that Fatima's like, you think we can help have her get on her feet and do better? And he's like, you see the way she's living? No. What if somebody would have said that about you? What if Fatima would have said that about you when she met you? When you have a pot to piss in or a window to throw out of. And you didn't even have a bite no more because she knocked you off the hoe. Since we judge people of where they at and not seeing the potential. You are one character who should never not see the potential of somebody and not lean in to helping somebody with potential or finding, digging deep and finding the potential because every single person who has come into your life has had to look under a rock, dig a little bit to find the greatness that is brewing on, on underneath of the triflingness, of the lying, of the cheating, of the disrespect, of the narcissism, of the selfishness. Like, let's be clear and let's be honest. Zach, you judging had the hella hard to have just come up off of the bike slash the bus. To have just not been paying rent for three years. To like, just now stop burning bitches. Like, relax. Relax. But he's trying to get full custody. Zach is unprofessional to the lawyer. The lawyer was a little shady, but he was also unprofessional. He got to grow up. I talked about this in Nonsense to Keep, so if you want more details about that, go and watch that um, video. But Fatima wants Zach to answer the phone when he's trying not to answer the phone, so then she winds up answering the phone. That's how Karen and her get on the phone because they're, they over there yucking it up and kikiing. Andy don't have no work to do because she's too busy trying to hide from Gary, but she's really trying to be messy and kiki with her new best friends. And Fatima and Karen get on the phone. As I said in my preview and my trailer breakdown, Karen told Fatima that she would shoot her if she came back to her house. As she should. Again, I don't have a problem with it. If you got a problem with me not having a problem with it, fight the air, slide down the wall, and move on. Okay? They're going back and forth. Who's bigger? Who's better? Who gonna do what? I'll fuck you up. You ain't about this life, Karen. I am this life. Girl, shut up. Shut up. And yes, I'm looking at Fatima in this moment, and I gave, a, I think, a really dope read. Again, watch our sisters keep it, because that gives you how I feel right after. This is me a lot more calm and trying to move forward and got things to do. So I'm like, eh, I'm going to tell you, but the real tea is over there. Link in the description box down below. I'm more on Fatima's head because she didn't have to talk to Karen. She didn't have to uh, basically provoke more violence and antagonize her she did that on purpose she did that because of her ego and she did it because she doesn't actually trust Zach so also stop running around here saying that you trust Zach because you don't all of this performing that you're doing at your job in front of your boss is because you don't trust him because you are insecure and it's all so very unnecessary truthfully 
Andy, you're going to continue to not be a good friend. Karen is scaring you. Fatima is scaring you. You don't want to get up and take the call because Fatima is telling you to sit and take it. Like, Andy's so damn weak in the knees. And I'm over her. Gary said you owe him an apology. Yeah, but I'm going back to work, so talk to you later. No, you won't talk to him later. Fatima, you ain't going to sit in here and shuck and jive and kiki. You need to be figuring out how to get your best friend back because you're wrong. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. Be on the lookout for my episode 12 preview as well as my 6B teaser breakdown, which are dropping right after this video. Again, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn your bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of my sisters' conversation because even though we're on hiatus, we're going to still be having um, new videos post about sisters. Drop your thoughts on the episode in the comment section down below. Not your thoughts on my thoughts because guess what, baby? I don't care, especially today. <laughs> but go ahead and share how you feel about the episode and what went down. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. All of the returning amazing folks. We are almost at 30,000 subscribers and I love you guys. I appreciate you for all of the support for every single view. And I'll see you in the next video.